Hi, welcome to this week's video. This week I'm making letterpress Christmas cards. I've been working with letterpress for the last uh, three or four years. I bought a little kit um, second hand from eBay that had been sitting in somebody's garage unused for years and it was really good to be able to bring it back to life and uh, make some things with it. So I've been making letterpress cards and notebooks and uh, various things like that and I also do bespoke letterpress projects so I make wedding invitations, business cards, uh, really th nice things for special occasions. But this is just a personal project and it's me making the cards that I'm going to send out to my friends and family this Christmas. I also teach letterpress workshops in Edinburgh so if that's something that you're interested in learning you can book a place on the workshop and come along and learn with me. And I will put a link down below for how you can book those workshops. So I've got quite a few uh, sets of, uh, of, of type, of different letters, alphabet sets. Uh, but uh, I, today I thought I would play with these stars a bit. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do at this point. So I'm just uh, playing around a little bit. But um, quite quickly I get an idea and... Uh, just start to go with it and I start to build the design in this composing stick that I've got here. What I'm doing is trying to find the right kind of spacing to go around the stars that I'm putting in uh, to build a nice solid block that's uh, going to go into the press and sit really nicely. So I've got long thin bits of metal uh, called leading that go in between the lines and then I've got these uh, these little metal blocks that are the same height as the as the the stars or the letters or whatever I'm setting, uh, so that um, they can fill in along the line and it'll all be the same height. So I decided I was making a Christmas tree shape out of stars. So I've got a bigger star on the top, and then I'm making the body of the tree out of slightly smaller stars. And uh, yeah, just starting with one and then two on the next row and three on the next row. Really, really simple. And I'm just going to keep filling up the composing stick that I've got in my hand there until I can't get any more in. And then I will uh, take it out and uh, yeah, start again. So just start working the same stick, but uh, yeah, start from where I left off and then I can join the two bits together. So I'm being very careful to keep my little block all together while I've squeezed it out and using some wooden furniture to prop it up, make sure it keeps its shape. Now you can tie a piece of string around it and keep it in shape like that as well. And if you're going to um, if you're going to be doing this over several days, that's a really good idea, just to make sure nothing falls out of place and nothing gets lost but I'm hopefully going to be printing mine in the next few minutes. And there we go. So I've finished the bottom of the Christmas tree. So now I'm going to join that to the rest. Got to be really careful at this point that you don't lose any of those little spaces or stars that you've very carefully put in place. And I decided that I wanted some text on here. So I've gone looking through uh, what type I've got and decide on uh, this one, which uh, I think is quite pretty. It's uh, it's quite quite a classic font um, with uh, with a nice little kind of double line detail. And I'm just going to write Merry Christmas. So I've just got to find the right letters and put them in the right order. And because this is letterpress and everything is uh, printed uh, back to front then uh, you start uh, left to right and upside down. So I'm going to join that to the rest of my Christmas tree and probably space it out with a little bit of, uh, of the wood so that it uh, doesn't sit right next to the Christmas tree. It sits a little bit lower than it. Now I'm going to lock it into this metal frame which is called a chase and um, 
So I'm putting this wooden furniture in to lock it in place. Now ideally you'd want to do it on both sides, so you do it along the long end and the short end, but unfortunately I don't have the right size furniture for that, so I'm just doing it the one way. So that's all locked in place and um, I can lift it up without worrying about it. So now I've just got to find something to print onto. So I've got a box of card here and this is um, a box of uh, card that's called Colorplan and it's by a company called GF Smith. Um, it's really good quality and it's really nice for letterpress printing. So I've got some red and green I think so that might be good for Christmas cards. I'm going to make 50 so just counting out how many sheets that I need. I'll get two cards from each sheet. Now previously I might have cut all of these with uh, just a craft knife and a cutting mat but now I have this beast of a machine which just cuts through all of them in one go. It's brilliant. Now it's time to get the press out and it's a tabletop press and a Dana 8x5. The 8x5 is the area that you can print 8 inches by 5 inches. And I'm going to be inking it up with this silver ink. It's an oil-based ink. So just put the ink on the ink disc there and then um, as I move the handle up and down it spreads it around on the ink disc and all over the rollers and just keep going until it's nice and smooth and even. Now I can take the, uh, the type that I've set and place it into the press and then now when the rollers go over it they'll ink up the surface of the, the letters and the type and the stars that I've put in there. So I'm just going to test it on a random piece of paper just to see what it looks like. Just checking there's nothing in the way and then print. So yeah. It's at this point I usually spot a spelling mistake, but not today. So now I've got a piece of card that's the same size as the cards that I want to uh, to make and I've marked the centre line so I can uh, raise or lower the, uh, the bar at the bottom, which is the lay gauge, and uh, place the card where I think it should be and just use a little sticky square to... Uh, yeah, to mark where the edge of it will go. That means that every card that I put in will sit at the same point. So now I'm going to print this, and I've just marked it by eye, but then I'll use a ruler to make sure it's lined up properly and make any adjustments I need to. And in this case, I, th I decided it just needed to be a little bit further up the page. So, um, moved everything around. And yeah, a lot happier with where that is. So now I can move on and uh, print on the card that I've cut. So, let's do one and check. See, make sure I'm 100% happy with it. And then when I am, I can go off and print the rest. I'm really liking the way this silver metallic ink looks on this uh, dark red and green card. I think gold would have looked just as nice, but I just happened to have uh, a set of silver envelopes I hadn't used, so I'm going to use those to match the ink on the card. Once you get into the swing of it, it really doesn't take long to print 50 cards. The setup takes much longer than the actual printing. And when I'm finished, it's quite simple to clean everything down. So uh, sometimes I use uh, like a solvent, like um, I've got a white spirit substitute. Uh, but most of the time I just use a little bit of vegetable oil on the rollers and the ink disc and on the type itself. So yeah, so just putting this a little bit of this onto a rag and the ink comes away fairly easily. 
So yeah, make sure to get rid of any trace of ink and uh, uh, give it a bit of a polish and then put it away and it'll be all ready for next time. So now my cards are all printed and the inks had time to dry. I'm now going to uh, uh, give them an envelope each and add a score line down the middle of the card to make them easier to fold. So I've just got this board with all of these um, lines, kind of like grooves in it. And I just find the one that's A6 size and uh, run a bone folder down it and then use that to crease the card and you get a nice clean fold on the card. And that's it. Really happy with the way they turned out and I hope my friends and family enjoy receiving them. So thanks very much for watching. If you like this, please uh, hit the button down below. And if you'd like to see more content like this, then please do subscribe. Uh, leave any comments down below and I will try and answer them. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye.